Welcome back, level fours. I hope in the last lesson you learned a thing or two. Now we are going to go to the most difficult one, one that most of you struggle with, and that is persuasive writing. Now in persuasive writing, we have business proposal. You might wonder, why must you learn about business proposals? Look, when you go out there in the world, you will definitely be looking for funds to start up a business. If you don't look for funds to start up a business, you might decide, hey, let me just see what I can do. I might be able to collect funds for my community. Maybe you have found a need there. You know, many businesses, whether you like it or not, they begin from us looking around our community. What is the need there? What can you do for your community? How can you change your community? Some of us think, oh, I need to have a lot of money. I don't have the resources. If you look around, there is one or two people around your community that may have some money. If not, you could be able to gather a few people who are well to do, they have extra money that they can share, and it doesn't have to be big. It has to start small. For example, you could only take five children and feed those five children. You could take five children, collect books for them. Do you need much money? No. Now, a business proposal is always written from one side point of view. Why one side? Because you're trying to persuade that person with the money or that investor, please partner with me or give me that cash so that I may be able to do this project. How will they know what project you have? By you putting it down. Now, let's look at a few things here. If you look at a proposal, a proposal is a written document that is very formal. And remember, yes, as we said, it either is written to be able to catch, to say, I have these services that I would like to give. If not, you have a product that you might want to sell and people do not know about it. So you go about showing people about your product. If not, so you are trying to collect funds. Now, those funds that you collect must be funds that you're going to put to good use because most of the times some of us are given funds and they don't put it into good use. But let's look at what is expected of you. Now, you can also be able to know that when you write your proposal, the language most of the times is very clear, precise, no errors know a lot of jargons, just straightforward to what that you want, so that you can communicate clearly. Because when people read your proposal and they cannot understand what you're trying to say, chances are, yes, you guessed it right, you will not get the money. And that is dangerous, because what are you trying to do? You are trying to get the money from these investors. So, what does it entail, a business proposal? First of all, it must have a title page. Now that title page needs to have the name of the recipient. It needs to have the name of the person who is writing about it, the organization. It has to have your own name, your address, date when you wrote it and the copyrights. But why would you think about your date and your own name? Because they need to be able to contact you. Besides that, then you would have a content page. Now the content page is one that indicates exactly what you're going to have. Sometimes people don't use a content page and when you're writing it in your exam, we don't give you the content page. We just want the title page and all the things that need to be involved in it, meaning a clear layout. We are going to have a look at that in a minute. So let's jump to it straight away. Now, the title page, we have mentioned what it requires. I have an example here of a title page, if you can see it. It is not so... perfect, but it's a better example. You need a logo on the side, you can see what I'm talking about, the names there. Let me just highlight a few. You can see there, all this is very important. Let's do a good highlight, one that is professional. And then cell phone number. I'll just highlight everything so that it looks good and tidy. It's always good to have tidy work. I cannot be talking about tidy work and you don't have tidy work. 
There we go. So all these is very important information for the recipient. And you can see at the top there, you have written to whom. I want to highlight something here. If you look here at the very top, that portion, it is what the project is all about. You are proposing for regular transport of iron and steel goods between Beaufort West and Cape Town. Why do you need to stipulate where? Because maybe there's another person who's created a proposal from Cape Town to somewhere else. Or by the time it gets to Beaufort West and you have realized or you've noticed a gap where no one is transporting between this place and this place. This is how you get all those opportunities. If you keep your eyes open, look out for those gaps. That is how you do it. Then that's what you're trying to convince the person. So, moving along. Now we've got our title page there. Our title page is looking good. Then what is really entailed in a proposal? Now, a proposal has got two sides to it or two facets to it. Besides having all those contents, introduction, key issues, description of the project, and then we have implementation plan, costing and all about us. I want to talk a little bit about this because we've noticed that most of you struggle with a few. Two, key issues and the other one is implementation plan. Key issue is normally what we are talking about. Let's quickly go back to that. What would be our key issue? Our key issue here would be the transportation or being able to transport iron and steel goods between this portion to this portion. That is what we are talking about. So if we already know what our key issue is, it should never be a problem. And remember, just focus on why you are writing your proposal. The other one is implementation. Implementation, most of you students struggle with it. You don't even find what we mean. Two issues here. You're going to be requested during your exam to probably just come up with a business proposal. They don't give you direction. They don't give you what to say. They don't tell you what to say. So you have to think it through. Now, if you come up with an issue, let's say you want to start a recycling project at your community. You have noticed that there's a lot of rubbish. You have noticed people are not educated about recycling. So you want to put this together. So. When you write all the other things and you describe all the things that you want to do, how you're going to do it and all that, now the implementation plan comes. That investor, that person who wants to give you the money, they want to know how are you going to deliver this. It involves time. It involves where you're going to start, where you're going to finish. So your implementation time might be once I have this proposal, I will start by buying rubbish bins. Those rubbish bins might cost me five and I will source them in Johannesburg. And then two weeks later, maybe you will go out there calling a meeting. You will call a meeting where people have to come and listen to what you have to offer. Then maybe you will say, the next two weeks I will go to a school. That is what an implementation plan is where you are giving steps of how you're going to pull this project together with specific timelines. Now remember, don't give long specific timelines. Many people do not want to wait for three years, four years. Big time projects, we could do that. But small time projects and those that will get you money quickly, they, they prefer to have six months to one year. So enough talking. Let's look at what is written down here. Why would a proposal be solicited or unsolicited? Two reasons. Solicited definitely means it has been requested. Maybe a person came before you and has noticed what is going on. So they say, who's going to put this proposal together? This is exactly what I want. Are you able to offer services? Solicited ones are those people who can offer services or products. So if you're one of that, those people who can offer a service or a product, you will have a solicited proposal. Now, an unsolicited proposal is one that no one has asked you to put together, but you have chosen to put it together. So this is one that they call a marketing proposal because when you put it together, you're trying to be noticed. You're trying to share with people what you have, 
what you're selling, what you're not selling. So this is quite an interesting one and many people do these ones. Be and when you write this one, it's a very tricky one. And most of the times during exam, they request you to do an unsolicited business proposal, meaning you market your service or you market a product. What do I mean by services? Maybe you're, like, you're a cleaning company. Maybe you sell bottles. Maybe you sell food. Especially at colleges, you find people who come to sell food because you cannot go probably to the market. Now, let's have a look at what it all entails. We have said introduction, key issues, but what I chose to do here is I chose to take one example from the Future Manager's textbook. And I have put it together. It's all about a library that is having a fundraiser. This is an unsolicited business proposal. So I've entered a few issues there. The introduction is missing. I'm sure you have noticed that. There's nothing about the introduction. But when you look, there is key issue. The key issue here is, which is what is very important, is that it is all educational. And what are they doing? They're looking for computers where they can uh, fund the um, library with computers for research in the library and for the social community. Sometimes people who have no access to internet, they use their library to go and do research, do projects, most so high school students and those that do not have smartphones. So this is a very good cause because at the library, any library that has got that, it is free of charge. They don't charge. So that's a good line. Now, if you look at the next one, we do have description of the projects and benefits. And then prior to that, we have client specifications and needs. Now there are two angles here. The first one, description of the project and benefits, that is all to do with an unsolicited business proposal. Why? Because every project that you put together, every time you seek money to start something, it better have a, have a benefit for the community. Some people just do, it cannot just be one to benefit you. So if you look at this one of the library, it is going to benefit the community. Those that do not have access to internet, what are they going to do? they are going to come to the library. And at the library, they can source free of charge. So that is a benefit for the community. What does that say? This library needs to exist. Let's cross over to the other one. Clients, specifications, and needs. When you have to write a solicited business proposal, there is something that the client wants. They tell you, I want one, I want two, I don't want three and four, so stay with one and two. This is a very difficult one to put together because you need to please the client. And if your proposal is, does not serve the client needs, we all know what's going to happen. What's going to happen? You will lose that opportunity to be able to give a service. And what does that mean? You have no work. And what do they say? No work, no pay, huh? But anyway, that's just by the line. So let's look at some of this. This is just catering to the description of the project. So it says, fair participants must hire stalls where they can sell their goods. Live music and a licensed refreshment tent will, be attra will attract visitors. The fair will be advertised on radio and by all stock fells. The library and the community will benefit, definitely they will, how? And also the sponsors who receive free entrance tickets and advertising. Listen, everybody is a win-win situation. So if you don't get to benefit on one end, you will get to benefit on the other. So the sponsors, for us to entice them to sponsor us, we need to give them free tickets. Otherwise they'll say, why must I pay for a ticket? And at the same time, I'm giving you money. Then here comes the implementation plans I was talking about. So, from in June, book halls and tents will be looked at. Between July and September, you can see here they've got quite some time. What are they going to be doing? They'll be selling tickets, and these tickets will be sold for stalls as well. And then by Friday, 17th of September, they will put up the tents and the stalls and receive sponsor goods to ensure 
and ensure that security is happening. What does that say to us? That this project will happen in September, sometime in September the 18th probably. Now, costing. This is not the only way you could put costing together in a business proposal. This is one way, and if you read it with me, you will see. If all sponsorship cover all expenses, we could make a profit of 22,000 rand by selling 40 stalls. What does that say? If we don't sell 40, we don't have 22,000. And also, if we sell 2,000 entrance tickets at 100 rand, we could also make, if we sell also entrance tickets, we could make also 2,000. And also, we shall be selling refreshments at five. So you can see there's a little bit of detail here. You just don't write an amount because that's what we find. Most of you just write a hundred thousand. What does that a hundred thousand entail? Please do break it up. Now the other thing that is there is that all about this sponsorship. The committee, all about them. You can see that information is missing. Who are they? You always need to tell people who you are and what you have achieved and what you have not achieved. If you are new in the game, then you stipulate that. Then you can see we have a conclusion, it's a simple line, it's not a lot that we do. So I have a challenge for you. I want you to look at these five sentences. These five sentences, they need to be placed somewhere. If we go back to our slide at the very beginning, you will see that introduction was missing. So some of those sentences need to be put under introduction, and then the others will be put under about the Tabong Library Support Committee. And then there's one that might be floating, and it needs, you need to find a place for it. This, I don't think it will take you more than two minutes to figure it out. So what do I want you to do? I want you to read, to read them. And then on the side there you say, this will go for introduction. Or this will go for all about us. And the one that you think does not fit in, you decide where it goes. And those three minutes start now. But you need to be very cautious when you're looking at these sentences. And um, a business proposal is one that can make or break your career. So some of the things that one needs to be careful of is when you're writing, watch out for your persuasive language. Now remember what we talked about. We talked about things like the title, where you put your name, you put your address, you put the date, and you put other things that are required so that you can be found and identified, so that they can see that you are really a registered company, because that's also something that is very dangerous. The other thing that we looked at is what it entails to write a business proposal. Remember, it can either be solicited or unsolicited. Now solicited is one that you have been requested to write and the client has specific uh, needs that they want you to meet. If not so, then they will look for another person if you don't meet those needs. The unsolicited is like the one you're working on now. One where you have to look for things that you think will be of use to those people. Things that you think will help those people that you're trying to help. Imagine that you are starting a business, like I mentioned, of recycling. What do you think will be useful to the community that will change their lives and make a difference in their lives? I hope that you'll be looking and thinking about all those things.
you must have cruised through it it wasn't difficult but let's just compare your answers to mine there we go so if you look at that in five years the committee has organized four successful library fundraisers that goes to about us that little piece needs to be added in about us then the next one happiness turvin is invited to sponsor 10 cases of beer for the refreshment tent that is part of the intro sponsors are needed another part of the intro and then we go to the next one visitors must buy entrance tickets this is description needs to be added in the description part because it was missing and then the last one the support of the committee of the tabong library is planning the tabong fair in the community hall for saturday 18 20 september let's assume 2020 2020 is still a way to go but i want to highlight something here now if you look at all this we had three sentences that could be put together for a good introduction but when you read them and the order they are in it is not in order so before you put it down you need to have a good flow remember what we talked about pressy when you put all your points together they might have they must have a good flow where you have a beginning sentence and then it's followed by another and a conclusion line so happiness tavern is invited to sponsor 10 cases of beer for the refreshment tent do you think that should be the first one the next one sponsors are needed do you think that is the first one a second or following then the last one the support of the committee of tabong library is planning the tabong fair in the community hall for that i would begin with the sentence sentence e i would begin with it and then i would follow with sentence b and finally i would finish with sentence c so it is e b and c that creates a good flow if i may read it to you just for you to hear it because when you hear it you also understand the support of the committee of the tabong library is planning the tabong fair in the community hall for saturday 18 september i'm going to say 2020 full stop happiness tavern is invited to sponsor 10 cases of beer for the refreshment tent also sponsors are needed that makes it a good flow and it has a good closing now moving right along with the business proposal there are other ways of writing that cost cost part remember in the beginning that cost part was costing part was just a line and a sentence and putting things together this is the most appropriate way of putting your cost together we need to see what everything is going and i mean where all the money is going for example cleaning of material of 800 meters we see it will cost that amount disposal waste we see it will cost that and then we need a total you will not collect marks for not writing it so beautifully like this so this is a way i would advise you in your exam when you're doing a business proposal please use this format is the most appropriate now hand in hand with a business proposal is motivation now motivation is big motivation is a piece that you will write now you are wondering why we write this is a reason why we write and motivation is a piece we write with an opinion when you motivate you are motivating to try and get the sponsor the person reading your motivation to accept your persuasion and to accept your point of view most of the times people do not know what to write but when you write a motivation you need to have a personal point of view and that personal point of view will drive from the subject let's say you're applying for a job and that job you know the category that you're applying for let's take me as a lecturer if i am applying for a job of a lecturer and i need to motivate that because nowadays no one is going to give you a job without you motivating question is 
Why do we need to write a motivation letter? We need to write a motivation letter because you need to convince that employer in the case of applying for a job, that I am your best candidate in comparison to those others that you're going to interview. So, you need to have something that is so touchy and very persuasive for them to be able to employ you. Let's look at some of few quick things that it will entail. Clearly as well, as I said, you need an introduction, but in this case, when you're writing a motivation in the body, you have things like another, either finding another reason you should employ me or the next reason you should employ me. And then clearly I will conclude by giving them reasons why they should employ me and why I should stand out better than all the others. Class, because of time, we will leave it there. And I, pr I hope that I have given you enough information for you to be able to handle a business proposal and a motivation to go with it. When you motivate, you need to tell them why they must give you that money. See you in the next lesson. The outbreak of coronavirus has turned the whole world upside down. The outbreak prompted the president to make a pronouncement that there should be a nationwide lockdown in response to the outbreak. The lockdown did not leave out the colleges. It disrupted the programs in terms of teaching and learning. As a result, the principals of Tibet colleges decided to come up with ways and means of supporting the students who are at home. The first broadcast of the lessons happened on the 15th of April, 2020. I therefore want to request all the students, all the lecturers, to commit themselves to watching these programs because these programs are meant for them. After each and every broadcasting, the lessons are sent to the website of DHET. They are also accessible on the website of the colleges. You don't need data to access that. I therefore want to lastly urge you, our students, our lecturers, to ensure that these programs are making an impact on these students, to prepare them for the examination. There is no more time left in the year 2020. Stay home, stay safe.